Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Qad sami'allahu qawla allati tujadiluka fi zawjiha Wa tashtaki ila Allah Wallahu yasma'u tahawurakuma Inna Allah sami'un basir الذين يظاهرون منكم من نسائهم ما هن أمهاتهم إن أمهاتهم إلا اللائي ولدنهم وإنهم ليقولون منكرا من القول وزورا وإن الله لعفو غفور والذين يظاهرون من نسائهم ثم يعودون لما قالوا فتحرير رقبة من قبل أن يتماسا ذلكم توعظون به والله بما تعملون خبير رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي فالحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ثم ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته once again alhamdulillah we're starting surah al-mujadala today we have some pretty heavy surahs to cover uh, today as they are all part of the musabbihat this uh, you will notice in a few of the musabbihat that Allah azza wa jalla fuses two matters together matters of uh, sometimes domestic concern family concern and uh, specifically marriage related matters and he combines them with matters of iman and when we say matters of iman it includes the threat to iman also which is nifaq hypocrisy so those two subjects get intertwined in a number of these surahs surah at-taghabun is like that surah al-jumu'ah is like that uh, surah at-tahrim is like that surah at-talaq is like that this surah is like that surah al-hashar is like that too so in in a bunch of these surahs that's that seems to be the case and it's interesting that that is the case because Allah Azza wa Jalla does not let us separate matters of iman with matters of family the the two are kind of inter interrelated you can't you can't just you know think of worry about your faith and not worry about your family you know and so there was one particular phenomenon that this surah begins with and that's that has to do with you know domestic disturbance basically you have a husband and a wife they get into a nasty fight and of course when you know things get escalated between husband and wife there may be a tendency to say some extreme things that you don't really mean or maybe you say them and you're so angry that your anger doesn't subside in a day or two or a week even you just say them and you know you're off now what happens in this case is the husband does something in the arabic called dhihar like the the sarf of it you should know dhahara yudhahiru finish it off for me dhahara yudhahiru dhiharan wa Mudaharatan, right? Fahuwa mudahir. So dhihar was an Arabic phrase used to say that the husband got so mad at his wife that he said, you're like my mother. From today on, you're like my mother. And dhahar literally is back. Like I'm not, you know, you're like the back of my mother, which basically means I am not interested in you ever again. I don't want anything to do with you. And I will never look at you. I will look at you I was as though I would look at my mother. Basically, we're done. Our relationship is finished. So it was a disgusting thing to say. But there was this case of a husband and wife, a sahabiya, Khawla radiallahu anha, whose husband said this to her. And she had little kids. And you know, now she's out of the house and she doesn't know what to do. So she came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying that this is what my husband has said. Because you know, back in the day, in the jahiliya times, pre-Islamic times, basically when you call your wife your mother, it's done. It's their form of talaq almost, right? That it's, it's done with, it's over. And he wants, it's, it's, sev- the relationship is severed forever. So she says, what should I do? And the Prophet ﷺ is silent because revelation hasn't come to inform him of the answer yet. And this is actually in and of itself revelation. That in and of itself is revelation. Because you have to understand the subtlety of when the Prophet responds sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and when he doesn't respond. Sometimes people would ask him and he would respond immediately. And then revelation would come. So it's not like he was waiting for revelation to come to respond. But sometimes it would be even a form of revelation for him not to respond. That he would, he would, something in his heart would tell him, an ayah is gonna come about this. I can't say anything about this. And in other cases, he would say something. Like, there are examples of that in Quran. People came and asked him permission. Can I not go into the battlefield? And he responded immediately, yeah, sure, you can stay behind. 
Then the ayat came down, why did you give them permission? You shouldn't have given them permission, subhanAllah. And sometimes he wouldn't respond. He would say, no, I'm going to wait for revelation to come. And actually, even in the case where he gave permission, and then revelation came, even that at a subtle level, at a very you know, covert level, even that's revelation. Because if he, gave the permi- if he didn't give the permission, the ayah wouldn't have been revealed. Right? The ayah needs to be revealed, and the ayah needs to address that particular kind of problem. So even him giving that permission is a form of revelation. That is a form of revelation. Because it facilitates you know, the, the, the Qur'an being revealed for that particular circumstance. Anyhow, so you know, she keeps on complaining, or she keeps you know, begging the Prophet I have little children, what am I going to do? And she's desperate and she's crying, and the Prophet is holding back. And then she turns to Allah and she makes this plea to Allah, Ya Allah help. And this ayah is revealed in this situation, this, this concept is revealed. And that's what we're going to see in this surah, in the beginning. قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا Allah already heard the word of the one that was debating with you, arguing with you. Give me, give me something, give me a solution about her husband, fi zawjiha. This is also, this ayah, from a linguistic point of view, is also a dalil that the word zawj can be used for husband or wife. That the word zawj can be used for husband or wife. Because the word zawj here is being used for husband. Other places, the broken plural of zawj, azwaj and mutahara wives. So it can be used spouses, in the meaning of spouses also. Okay? Wa tashtaki ila Allah. Ishtaka yashtaki means to complain. And to complain with, you know, like shaka yashku in Arabic is also to complain. But ishtaka is to complain a lot. It's the mubalagh form, it's the ifti'al form. So it's more powerful. So he was, she was really complaining to Allah. Wallahu yasma'u tahawurakuma. And Allah Himself was actually all along listening to the discussion both of you were having. Tahawara, let's try the sarf here, let's see how good you are. Tahawara, ya tahawaru, tahawuran. That's the mustar mentioned in the ayah. Tahawurakuma. That's the mustar of tahawara ya tahawaru. From hiwar. Hiwar is conversation, dialogue, back and forth. Okay? Ba- back and forth. Like in Surah Al Kahf, wa huwa yuhawiruhu. He's just talking to him. But this is a mutual exchange, and tahawur is used to suggest that the conversation was courteous, that the Prophet ﷺ was being courteous with her. If it's, you know, a more intense conversation, then the more intense pattern is used, which is hiwarakuma. Hawara yuhawiru. That's more intense. That can even be offensive. And actually in Surah Al Kahf, hiwar is used, not tahawur. Yuwakala lahu sahibuhu wa huwa, not yatahawaruhu, but yuhawiruhu. وَهُمَا يَتَحَاوَرَا No, يُحَاوِرُهُ So it's more intense actually. So Allah saw your exchange among each other. إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ Certainly Allah hears all and sees all. الَّذِينَ يُظَاهِرُونَ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ نِسَائِهِمْ Those among you that have done the, this, the, this despicable act of declaring their wives their mothers. مَا هُنَّ أُمَّهَاتِهِمْ They are not their mothers at all. That's the end of that problem. مَا هُنَّ مُبْتَدَى أُمَّهَاتِهِمْ خَبَر Finish. Okay, and the ma is for refutation, right? No, that's a stupid thing you did. You're wrong. They're not, you can call her all you. You can call her an elephant. She's still going to be your wife. You can call her your mother, your sister, your grandma, your grandpa. It doesn't matter. She's still going to be your wife. You can call her whatever you want. That will not change the relationship. And this is actually something across the board in Islamic relationships. Wa ulul arhami awla ba'duhum bi ba'din fi kitabillah. Right, the relations of the womb. And even the relations of marriage. They have a precedent in Islam. They are, وَأَخَذْنَا مِنْكُمْ مِثَاقًا غَلِيلًا They've taken a severe contract from you. It doesn't just get severed by some exaggerated speech. It doesn't disappear. And this is even true of the most intense loving relationships. Not just this was out of hate, but even out of love. In Surah Al-Ahzab we learn when the Prophet ﷺ out of love declares, you know, Zayd radiallahu anhu his son, it's not enough. You can call him your son all you want, he's still not your son. He's not going to have a shared inheritance. He can't take your name. He can't be Zayd ibn Muhammad. You can't change his name. Because that's the, his identity will not change. Out of love, you can call him your son. The same way you can call somebody Ammu, uncle. Doesn't make him your dad's brother. <laughs> it's a term of respect. These things don't actually have an impact on actual relationships. And the same is true at the MSA, guys. She's like my sister. Okay, yeah. She could be like your sister. But she's not your sister. And she, your sister is your mahram, and she's not. So stop playing with words, because that's not going to change anything. That's, that doesn't change anything. Or you say in your extended family, sometimes you have extended family, and you get Eid get-togethers, right? And you know, siblings are there, cousins are there, and you're like, oh, my cousins are like my sister, right? They're just like that. We were raised together. 
you know, I used to slap him when he was little. So it's okay that he's 19 and I'm 18 and we're, you know, watching a boxing match together or something. It's okay. We're just having fun. It's just like my brother. Uh-uh. He's not like your brother because he's not your brother. Saying it doesn't change that. Okay, so mahun na umati, and of course the other negative example is very common among Desi culture. From today on, you are not my son. <laughs> Don't call me your mother ever again. Uh, no, mom, I'll call you mom. You can't change that. Father says, "Aaj ke baad tu mere bete nahi ho." Yep, I am. Can't change that. Sorry, you're stuck with me, and I'm stuck with you, dad. <laughs> It's gonna be like that. This is, this is the half. But the, the ugliest form of it, obviously between the husband and the wife. And this also suggests that Allah took the license away from husbands to be able to say whatever they want in the confines of their home. That even that got heard. And that got addressed by revelation of Quran. And it's a, a, a few things, right? This is first in the beginning of the surah. Two, the surah is named by that, that discussion. Mujadala, the debate. Debate between who? The Prophet ﷺ and this woman. The surah got named by that. And not one. Four ayat on the same issue. Four ayat on the same issue. First, that he heard her complaint. Which means her complaint is legitimate and important enough that an ayah of Qur'an should be dedicated to it. Two, that, that then on top of that, they should, it should be refuted. مَا هُنَّ أُمَّهَاتِهِمْ إِنْ أُمَّهَاتُهُمْ إِلَّا اللَّا وَلَدْنَاهُمْ Their mothers are nothing but the one, those women who gave birth to them. This is الَّذِينَ Alladina's feminine form is Allati and Allai. This is Allai being used here. Inshallah, when we do a literary study of Quran one day, then we'll study the difference between Allati and Allai. Sometimes Allah uses Allati, and sometimes He uses Allai. There's a subtle difference between them. Anyhow, their 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 uh, mothers are none but the ones who gave them birth. Waladna hum. This is huwa walada hunna waladna. This is the past tense of the verb. Wa inna hum la munkaram min al qawl. And they're saying something disgusting of the things that can be said min al qawl. Of the things that could be said, they've chosen something very disgusting to say. And the word min al-qawl here suggests there were other ways to express your frustration with your wife. There were other ways to get the point across. You just didn't think it through and you just picked the worst thing you could have said. Munkara min al-qawl. And I understand the word munkar here too, because I mean, inshallah ta'ala, um, I, I plan on doing another series. I wasn't happy with the first series I did on Umar bin Ma'roof and Nahi al-Munkar. I plan on doing another one. But the word munkar comes from nakira. And nakira literally means unknown. That, that which is unknown. Munkar is that which is unknown. Ankara actually also means to deny. Like if you, you see someone and say, you know that guy, ta'rifuhu? La unkiruhu. I have no idea who that is. I completely deny knowing him. I have nothing to do with that guy. Is completely unfamiliar to me. That's munkar. Ma'roof, on the other hand, is that which is easily recognized. Obviously, yeah, I know him. He's ma'roof to me. He's known to me. Right? So the word munkar here is, this is alien to anybody with a sense of decency, this kind of language is completely alien to them. It's unknown to them. And from it stems the idea that it's evil. Because if decent people would never have heard such a thing, that's only because it must have been evil. So the idea of something being unknown or unusual, and you know, disturbing, is associated with evil. Because in a good society, in a healthy society, those words are just, they become unknown. Like you know if you raise your children in a sheltered environment, and they don't hear foul language, they don't hear cursing, they don't hear, you know, people like making fun of each other, they don't see, they don't hear riba. First time they hear a foul word, do they even know what it means? No, it's munkar to them. Like, what is that? What is that? Munkaram min al qawl. Wazura, and it's a false statement. Zur is actually a false accusation that is meant to hurt somebody. Literally zur means, False accusation, that is meant to hurt somebody. It also means false testimony, that is meant to hurt somebody in a trial. The Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورَ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا Surah Al-Furqan. They don't testify false testimony meant to hurt somebody. They don't testify falsely in court. They don't say, yeah, yeah, he did say that. I was there, I saw him. That's zur. So this is this is serious matter. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا عَفُوٌ غَفُورٌ And certainly Allah is extremely pardoning and always forgive, forgiving, extremely forgiving. And the idea behind that is, look, this is a pretty big deal, but don't let it happen again and forget it ever happened. Move on, make istighfar. وَالَّذِينَ يُظَاهِرُونَ مِن نِسَائِهِمْ ثُمَّ يَعُودُونَ لِمَا قَالُوا Then those who did this heinous crime, uh, the crime of vihar, they said that to their women. And then they go back from what they said, they take it back. يَعُودُونَ لِمَا قَالُوا Literally going back from what they said means they took it back. Okay, okay, sorry, 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 I didn't mean it. 
فَتَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةٍ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَتَمَاسَّ Then they have to free a slave before they can touch one another. They can't have intimacy as husband and wife again until they pay a penalty, a crime, a, pay, you know, a, a, a tax. And that will be, that, that, that penalty will be freeing a slave. ذَلِكُمْ تُعَذُونَ بِهِ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ That is what you are being counseled to do. That is the counsel being offered to you. And that, and Allah is especially in regards to whatever you're up to, in, in fully aware, has full news. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ And whoever wouldn't find such a slave, that also means not like he went around looking for a slave and he couldn't find one, but it also means if you're not capable. If you're not capable of freeing the slave, you just couldn't, you don't have the financial means, فَصِيَامُ Seriously, شَهْرَيْنِ متتابعين. Two consecutive months. Two consecutive months you have to fast. Sixty days and mutatabi'ain suggests you can't take a break in the middle. And make it up later. Mutatabi'ain. Min qabli an yatamassa. Before they get to touch one another. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ And whoever can't even do that, maybe he's sick. Maybe he's an old guy, got mad at his wife. And says, you know, can't even stand straight. And he says, you know, from today you're, you know, my mother. And the old lady's like, you know, you have to fast sixty days. He can't even fast two hours without his medicine. What's he gonna do? Then Allah made another way. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَإِطْعَامُ سِتِّينَ مِسْكِينًا Then he better feed 60 poor people. And he didn't put a restriction on it, like it has to be one party for 60 people. So it, have, it could be over time. But until he finishes paying off, give feeding how many? 60 people. So if not 60 fast, then 60 iftars, right? It's one or the other. But then... You know, there are other conditions. Min awsati ma tutaimun. Some some fuqaha add here from other ayat of Quran. Not just like you go around handing people like a Twix. You know, one of these. Here, one, two, and you take four bars right out of this, and just four people are covered. No, the same kind of meal you eat. Min awsati ma tutaimun. You know, from the average of what you would feed, meaning what you eat yourselves. The kind of food you eat yourself. So you gotta take 60 people out to lunch and they better be poor. Don't take your friends out to lunch and say, okay, now it's done. Whew, never gonna say that again. No, no, no. Miskeen, they have to be poor people. ذَلِكَ لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ That is so that you can believe in Allah and His Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is this purpose of, what is the purpose of saying so that you can believe in Allah and His Messenger? لِي, you know, لَمَ الْعِلَّةِ لِكَيْ لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Because when you pay a penalty in this dunya, and you paid for so long, 60 days of fasting, 60 people are being fed, you know, freeing a slave. These are serious things. And when you're engaged in paying that penalty, every time you're paying it, what's your motivation? I'm making up for the crime I committed, so I don't have to answer for it in the akhirah. So that constant, that consciousness, that keeps coming back over and over again, is a reinforcement of your iman. In Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ Those are the boundaries set by Allah. وَلِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And for disbelievers in particular, there is going to be painful punishment. The ayah is not even about kafirin. The ayah is about believers. And this is a madani surah. The entire audience is Muslims. The entire, you know, this is going to be a يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا surah. You know? Now, what's, what's kafirin doing here? Because this is a kufr of the hukum. It's the kufr of the instruction. Whoever denies this instruction, doesn't care about it, what's the Prophet gonna know what I did in my house with my wife? How is he gonna know? What's, it's my personal business. You wanna be in denial of it? Well then Allah will deal with you. Adabun alim. They'll have painful punishment. So we're learning that, you know, the word kufr even is not one broad paint stroke term in the Quran. It depends where it's being used. What are you in denial of? For example, in Surah Ali Imran, Allah talks about Hajj. He talks about Hajj. وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ إِسْتَطَاعَ عَلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ He says, whoever can make the Hajj of the house should go. And whoever does kufr? What do you mean? Whoever does kufr? Whoever denies that obligation? Whoever can go and still doesn't go? Whoever is ungrateful for the opportunity? Allah opened the means, the finances, the health, everything is there for you to go and you still denied it? That's a kind of kufr too? You don't go, you don't go around calling that person a kafir, but that's a personal call. Am I in that crime? Am I in that f- particular form of this, you know, uh, denial? And that particular form of ingratitude? Because at the root level, that's what kufr means. Denial and ingratitude. Maybe you're denying one instruction. That's one instruction too many. Maybe you're ungrateful for one opportunity. That's one opportunity too many. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحَادُّونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ 
كُبِتُ No doubt those who resist, who oppose the messenger with the strongest form of opposition.